All right, the aforementioned Pete Hegseth, co-host of Fox & Friends Weekend, is here. <laughs> now, Pete, I, I think that some of these bunkers are bigger than the houses that you and I grew up in, but you've mm -hmm. got a bunker, and that it doesn't surprise me to hear that. <laughs> what kind of bunker are you building out there? A very simple bunker, Brian. I thank Griff for the shout out. I don't I don't have billions of dollars to build a bunker bunker. Like most people, not a lot of disposable income with lots of kids. So you do what you can. The house we bought came with like a cellar bunker tornado shelter type thing. So we're trying to modify it to be prepared. But all I'm really trying to be prepared for, Brian is a grid down situation. I don't know if the zombie apocalypse is coming. I don't know if war is coming. I don't know what's coming. All I know is that when the power goes out, whether you're in Tennessee or New York City, life changes. It, within 48 hours, the whole world's different. Within 96 hours, we can't even predict what the world would look like, hmm. what, our, what our society would look like. Hmm. So where are you going to get food? Where are you going to get water? Where are you going to get power? How are you going to get off the island of Manhattan if you want to get off? Or how are you going to go get to your family and friends? Do you have gasoline? Like, to me, it's more just a mindset of having the essentials for five, six, seven days. And then mm. if the grid's really down, well then maybe only the billionaires survive at that point. Mm. It's funny, growing up, my grandparents had a bomb shelter and it was really fun to play in it. I never knew that it would be like a serious thing that we'd actually be talking about, Pete. Um, on that note, I want to stick with this theme, but it was interesting that the CEO of that company said that they're seeing a little bit of an uptick as well in areas like Los Angeles, right? Where it's a lot of crime that's increasing and people are focusing on security. Do you see that as sort of like another secondary business for these guys? Big time. Well, that's a huge secondary business, the idea of safe rooms uh, where you can go should you be. I mean, think about places where the rule of law barely exists. The police forces have been thinned out. The 911 reaction time is minutes, not, I mean, tens of minutes when it used to be a minute or two. What are you going to do if there's a home intruder? Mm. Uh, first, first of all, a lot of these places, you don't even have a Second Amendment right. By the way, I listed food, water, and everything else. Before that, you better have the ability to defend yourself, a firearm and ammunition, because mm. if things really go sideways, that's what you're going to need to protect yourself. <laughs> but, yes, bunkers, safe rooms, weapons. Hey, hey, you, you, we, we, can, we, we can laugh about it, but if something changed, it's going to be the folks that are prepared that are ready mm. to go. I, it's not a conspiracy. I think mm. it's real life. Let's get to something a little more fun. It seems that President Trump is going to be doing a oh, fundraising. Is it is a little more fun. At least <laughs> it'll be a party and not the apocalypse. <laughs> but he's going to be doing a funding a fundraising event in Palm Beach this weekend. He wants to try to raise $43 million in one night compared to that $26 million that Biden brought in, by the way, when he was flanked by former presidents Clinton and Obama on each side who really were more of the draw. But also, Charlie Gasparino reporting um, that billionaires like Ken Griffin, for example, might be donating to Trump as well. You want to see not only the grassroots side of this, but the big donors get behind him, Pete. Yeah, billionaire bunker or give a hundred, uh, give a million dollars to Trump. A lot of people are deciding to give to Trump. I can see what happened here. The, Joe Biden needed a lot of help from celebrities and former presidents to raise $25 million, and Trump was like, nope, mine is going to be bigger, <laughs> and I'm going to do it at home. Okay, we're going to do it at my house. I don't even have to go to Radio City Music Hall, just my house. And so he's going to do it at Mar-a-Lago. They're going to raise almost twice as much. The billionaires are going to make their way over to Trump, if, even if they didn't like him. Because the alternative is the chaos and the economy that we've seen under Biden, the assault on mm. industries like energy and on just the rule of law. So I think they'll come along. Fundraisers mm. like that, that are a demonstration of that, in addition to the low dollar numbers that Trump raises, which he's better than anybody at. He's got a bunker. He does impressions. Pete Hegseth. <laughs> that Thank was a good you, one. Yeah. Good awesome question. stuff. You know it.